Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota here in the U.S. And I'm here to bring you a live paper crafting class, another one. We do these weekly on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Central Time. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late for those of you that are live with me. Um, I don't know what happened. I put in the wrong password in my iPad and it locked me out. It said you won't be able to get in for another five minutes. And I'm like, what? I only did this once, so I don't know if someone in my house was trying to get into my iPad just earlier or what, but yeah, so I'm in <laughs> and we're on. Okay, so today uh, I have a very fun idea to share with you. It's another fun fold. I love doing fun folds. And this, um, this one I got, I was scrolling around on Pinterest and I found a card by Patty Bennett that was shared there. And so I clicked on it to go to her blog post and she had shared this fold and shared it in four different ways. And I was like, oh my gosh, I remember doing that one before and that one. I mean, I like did two, two versions of this fold a few years back. Anyways, I was excited because it came back to my mind and then it opened my ideas because she had shared a couple other ideas that you could do with this fold. So it's an accordion fold of a 12 by five and a half inch piece of paper and you can the way that you connect the pieces to in the card creates the different folds and i thought of a fifth one so i'm going to share these five different fold or five different five different cards from one fold uh the same folded piece of designer paper that's the topic today welcome to all of you and welcome especially to those of you that are new to my channel um, and I want to introduce you to Trisha Joseph she is live with us and i have to apologize to her outwardly in front of all of you because I forgot to send her the link to this video. She happened to find it. Good job, Trisha. And then I forgot to send her a list of measurements and supplies, so please forgive me. But for those of you that are looking for it, I do have the supply list um, already attached to this, the description of this video. And at 12.15, you'll be able to access the measurements on my blog post as well. Uh, oh, in a lot, um, along with close-up photos, of the cards that I'm sharing. I'm sharing two versions for sure that are completed and then I'm going to do the other uh, three to make five total in the coming days and post those on my blog so that you can come back and see what I ended up doing with those. So, but I, I will show you the actual fold, so I'll show you the base of it. Anyways, welcome, welcome. Let us go to the computer right now and I'm going to go over to, um, oops, let me click on something else here. Um, there we go. I'm going to show you comments that rolled in from last week. Um, I love it when you tell me where you're from, so please continue to do that. Uh, it's, it's nice to see all the different locations. I mean, Belgium and Minnesota. Yay for Minnesota. <laughs> Hutchinson. So, you know, great. I love it because it's, it's fun to see where all of, you know, all of you are at. And it's fun to see the enthusiasm, too, that some of you um, express in your comments. So thank you. It, it makes... It makes it even more exciting for me. I love sharing, uh, but when you guys are having fun on the other side, it's it's great. So, gosh, look at all these different places. And a couple of you, um, it was new. You were new to my live videos for the first time, so welcome to those of you that are new. And then over here, I wanted to show you um, that I am a stickler with math. <laughs> I love to be exact in my measurements, and it looks like. Um, hippie Kansas girl, you appreciated that you're an engineer. So yes, three thirty seconds of an inch is important, um, at least to some of us, right? Uh, what else? Oh, and I talked about the ink being non-toxic last week. <laughs> yeah, don't feed it to your dogs. Uh, but um, who was it that said that? Uh, Deba Do, Deba Do B. <laughs> um, you had uh, mentioned that you were you were feeling better when I mentioned that it was non-toxic ink that I was using because then if your dog actually licked the card later on you knew that they wouldn't uh, have an issue so and you know hippie Kansas girl you made me giggle a few times last week uh, karate kid karate kid stamping yes stamp off stamp on um, what else great tips shared by some of you as well with the glue dots thank you so much Nancy Clark for mentioning that if you put like a ribbon or a twisty tie around your glue dot uh, ring, 
you can kind of help remind yourself to only expose one dot at a time. It's a great idea. I know a lot of people who do that. Um, and then using your acrylic block to rub in the re-inker, the, the ink that you put with the re-inker into your pads. Just use your acrylic block. You don't have to go to your kitchen or your, your credit cards or anything like that. That's an awesome tip. Thank you, Sue. And Kathy, I need to use my silicone craft sheet, my silicone mat a lot more, don't I? You guys always tell me to pull that thing out and I forget. But yes, it's a great habit to be in. All right, we're gonna go to my desktop and I'm gonna show you a couple products here. Now, as I'm showing you these products, I wanna point out that comments are not only welcome because they're fun, but you get entered into a prize drawing. And later on, we're gonna do a prize drawing from our live commenters. Trish is gonna announce that at the end. So you'll want to you'll want to comment, you'll wanna chime in. Just not only because it's fun, but who knows, right? These dies are new in our mini catalog, our August through December mini catalog. You can see how fun they are. They're like an edge type of die, and then they have some extra little fun doodads out here that you can that you can die cut out of your paper or cardstock to get some fun um, accent pieces. So that set of dies is called Sweetest Borders dies. And we're gonna be using this one today. So I'm gonna pull that out and set that aside. And we're gonna use it along with a non-Christmas stamp set. You guys are like, what? <laughs> right? I know, it's butterfly wishes. And the reason why I pulled a non-Christmas stamp set out is because I wanted to make you aware that the paper that I'm using does not necessarily have to scream Christmas, even though it's called Christmas time is here. Um, there's, it's just, it's more wintry and floral, if anything. So we're gonna make a winter birthday card, a card that you would give at the colder time of months, uh, colder months of the year. Now, those of you that live in the Southern hemisphere, maybe you wanna pull that out during your colder months, which would be now or August, July, <laughs> I think. <laughs> anyway, so we're just gonna use a couple sentiments on here to make a birthday card. I'll show you another sample that I did um, using a different fold with this paper um, afterwards. And I'll, I'll, I'll be using a couple different, uh, I'll use a different stamp set and a different set of dies for that one. But let me first just show you the paper. So this is one of the papers and you can see it's just a bunch of roses, right? And then here we have roses, but we have some kind of like, you know, pine cones and some, um, I don't know, evergreen type needles in it or whatever, pine needles. And so it makes you think more wintry type of decorations. The gold accenting, the gold foiling makes it definitely something, you know, holiday-ish, right? And then this one here, Again, just barely a hint of the berries and the holly leaves there, but they're just, it's beautiful paper. Now let's look at the flip side. Okay, again, it doesn't have to be screaming out Christmas, right? So we're gonna make a non-Christmas card. We're gonna pull out, um, I think I'm gonna grab this paper. No, I'm gonna grab this one because I wanted to show you something with this. So uh, the finished card. Um, I'm gonna open that up over here. You guys can't see it quite yet, but you saw a hint of it in the preview image, right? So let's go ahead and cut a piece. We're gonna cut a five and a half, not five and a half, sorry, five and a quarter inch piece of designer paper from this 12 by 12 sheet. But because this 12 by 12 sheet has images that are spaced pretty far apart, we wanna make sure that we're getting the most from it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna flip it this way. Mm, maybe this way. I'm looking at my finished one because I can kind of analyze these before I cut them. I think I'm gonna cut my strip from this section right here, okay? And that'll give me another one that looks kind of similar where I've got a top and a bottom on the right-hand side and then some rose clusters on the left, okay? So let's go ahead and trim this one at five and a quarter inches. So if you're using the Stampin' Up! trimmer, did you notice, by the way, that my desk surface is different? <laughs> it's, it's uh, I didn't resurface it. I actually, I, I have a wonderful father who, um, gosh, I don't even know how long ago now, about a year ago, maybe, 
He took and covered my tables with these beautiful floorboards and my brown one is what he surfaced and he covered it with, but then he made these extra, um, extra boards and you can see I'm moving it here. These extra boards that I can put on top if I'm working with darker papers and I am going to be working with some darker papers that just didn't work right with the, with the brown surface. So yeah, there you go. So this is five and a quarter by 12 inches and we're going to score and the score marks are easy. They're very easy. Um, I kind of adjusted the ones that Patty Bennett used because we're using the whole 12 inch instead of a, a shortened version of it. She used a slightly shorter version. So we're going to score it two inches. We're going to score it five. And then we're going to extend the arm on our trimmer and we're going to score one more time at eight. So it's two, five, and eight. Super easy to remember. Ha! I didn't make you struggle with math today, right? Thank you, Rachel. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to fold back and forth. We're going to grab our bone folder and we're going to pull in these folds so that they line up on the sides real well. Don't you know? Make sure that they don't go off kilter. Like you know, you don't want to fold it like that. Okay, so make sure everything's lined up on the sides here. All right. So there is our accordion fold. This is our base. Now I'm going to show you other ways afterwards that you can take and fold this in different ways to make five different cards. But let's go ahead and just make the full accordion card today um, first. And so let's bring in, um, we're going to take a couple ribbon pieces and we're going to have a third one that's shorter. Let's do the measurements next. Rachel, you're forgetting the measurements. So now you can take a screenshot. Get ready with your, um, your device so that you can take a screenshot. If you don't know how, again, you can totally go and um, go onto my blog, which the link is in the description of the video. You can go there after this is done at 12.15 my time, which is like an hour and 15 minutes after, and you can copy and paste all this stuff. Okay, so we're going to use these items. Let me brighten this up a bit here. Um, we have the Christmas Time is Here designer paper, Butterfly Wishes stamp set, the Sweetest Border dies, and then you can see that we're bringing in a couple other pieces of cardstock, some um, Mossy Meadow ink, um, wonderful gems. You're going to love those. I can't wait to show you those if you haven't seen them yet. We're going to use the um, embossing machine and the trimmer, which we've done, and then some other basic tools. Down here, I've listed some other items, and those are going to be for the second card that I show you. And over here are the measurements. So we just took that five and a quarter by 12 inch piece of designer paper, and we scored it parallel to the short side at two, five, and eight inches. Now we're going to bring in the other card stock, and you can see we have um, three pieces of Mossy Meadow. We have three pieces of Whisper White. And then we have some ribbons, which I just shared with you. All right, now we're gonna go back to the desktop. All right, so let's bring those pieces in. Here are the Whisper White pieces. So this one we're gonna cut out of, and this one is two and a half inches wide by about the same height as our card. And then this is a layer, a piece that we're gonna layer onto one of our Mossy Meadow pieces that's gonna go on the inside of our card. That piece is, ooh, what is it? Two and a half by um, three and three quarters. And then this smaller piece, one and seven eighths. So it's just under two inches by um, two and a half. Now we could make it two inches, but what I did is I got smart with my Mossy Meadow card stock. So these are the pieces that you would cut with your Mossy Meadow card stock. This is a quarter, oh here, let me zoom out. This is a quarter sheet, this is half of that, and this is half of that that's a little short. Okay, now watch this. So if we bring these in, these are the same pieces. In other words, you can make two of these cards using one of the dark base colored cardstock piece, uh, sheets, okay? So I can get two cards from this real well if I cut things this way. And again, this piece is not two inches wide, it's one and seven eighths, so I can get that one eighth inch border because this piece 
is half of that, and that's two and an eighth inches wide. And again, you can go back to the measurements and see that, but that's the reasoning I did that. Now you can totally make this piece wider if you don't care about saving cardstock. You can totally make this wider and then, you know, get rid of the eighth, eighth measurements, right? The eighth inch measurements. All right, so here we go. Let us die cut next. Let's bring in our beautiful Holly dies here and our die cutting machine. So here's our gorgeous stamp and cut and emboss machine. Isn't that pretty? Gotta love it. By the way, this would be a great thing to buy now. It's new. It debuted on September 1st. And um, along with that, there's a starter kit promotion going on that you can get up to $125 worth of product for $99 plus tax. The shipping is free. So it's a great way to purchase a lot of product for a lot less. So if, if this is on your wish list, getting it through a starter kit is an awesome way to go. And I said promotion, didn't I? Yes, I did. I'll share more about that in a minute. But that is the starter kit deal. And it's actually, that deal it happens all year long. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm placing my white cardstock down onto my scratchy, um, my already scratched up cutting mat. I've got my die adapter, so I've got plates one and two. You can see one and two on there in the corners, right? And then I've got my third one, which is a cutting mat. It's actually an old cutting mat, but I'm using it. And then here's number three. Okay, so these are both number three. And you just sandwich your paper and your die between the clear cutting mats. We're going to line this up, and then you just crank it. And once it catches, you hang on to the top and you just keep cranking this handle. And the rollers inside the machine squish everything together so that when you're done, you have that. So you can see what happened. All of those wonderful things got cut from that paper. You can see there's residue on here. I'm gonna have to clean that off. So let's pull this over here. And we're going to grab our die brush adapter on our take our pick take your pick tool so this thing just it comes separately you buy it separately and then you take and you just screw it onto your tool and you're all set for using it like this and it actually comes with a, a foam mat too so you can place this on there and then you can rub but i like holding it i don't know why it just i like to feel the little pieces maybe coming out i don't know Maybe I feel like it's supported more too if I hold it, but we're just rubbing this brush over the top of our die, our um, paper and our die held together. And what it's doing is all these little brush things are going into the holes, um, those little holes there, and that helps to remove those extra pieces. So, and some of those are stubborn, they'll come out in a minute here, but we're gonna now take and separate these and we can take and grab Anything else, there we go, now it's separating. Anything else that didn't come out with the brush, you can just kind of pull at or poke at. Okay, so there is our fun, let's grab a little scissors here, there we go. So there's our fun little border, okay? Isn't that beautiful? I love it, it's got the positive and negative look to it too. Okay, let's move this aside. Oh, before we do, we could use some of these pieces. Good idea, Rachel. <laughs> I was gonna do that and I forgot. So I'm gonna pull off these pieces that look like they could still embellish our card. Um, some of them like this, you can tell those are the insides, so we, we don't want really necessarily want those. But I want that piece, I want these. Those are scraps that can get thrown on the floor. We could even use this guy here if we wanted. Okay, all right. Let's put that over here. Let's do some stamping right now. Might as well get all our pieces ready before we finish our card. This is what the other one looks like when it's die cut. So you have two border dies in that set and then you have again those little tiny pieces that would do extra you know, candy canes or whatever. I wanted mine not to be Christmassy so I didn't use the candy cane border but I think I will on one of my um, one of my ones that I haven't completed yet. I'll share those on my blog in a few days, okay? All right, so now let's stamp. So the only two stamps that I'm gonna use 
<laughs> I flipped these over and look at, I didn't put the labels on them. That's a Rachel thing. Um, I'm using birthday wishes and love to celebrate you. Okay. You could use any um, stamp set, I guess is what I'm sharing with you because really we're just using the sentiments. I keep flipping them over looking for the words. We're just using the sentiments from the set. Let's grab our white paper now, our white, because we're gonna stamp on those two pieces. Um, I think we'll do the birthday wishes on the inside. So you have to look at the bottom of your stamp if you're not um, putting labels on. And then I use the, the um, straight line on the top to help guide me. <laughs> I know, it's, it's lazy. It's not lazy, Rachel. It's the fact that you just didn't take the time to do it yet because maybe you were busy. Ah, there we go. Thank you for making me feel better. <laughs> so there's one stamped piece and we're gonna stamp on our other one. And I'm peeking to see how I did it. I think I did it right in the middle. Love to celebrate you. Make sure it's up and down, straight up. Okay, there we go. I put it up just slightly higher because we're gonna put a ribbon ac across the bottom. <laughs> Whoops, I would have had to restamp that one. Okay, next, we're gonna grab our ribbons. Okay, we're ready to assemble, I'm excited. So let's take and do this one first. We're gonna cut this down, because I didn't trim it yet. I think I told you three inches. Yeah, you don't need this whole long piece. I'm gonna zoom in. We're way too far away now. So about three inches, four inches. And this one and this one, those are the right length. Okay, here's a trick. When you're putting your adhesive onto really, really skinny ribbons, first of all, grab your silicone mat, which I didn't do. Here, we'll use this. We'll use some grid paper. And put them really close to each other, like this. And then you just have to kind of hold them steady with your fingers but all the edges are touching, okay? And then you grab your adhesive, throw the cap off, and you run your adhesive, hang on, start moving. I'm one-handed right now, there we go. Okay, so run your adhesive along the ribbon together at the same time. And you'll be able to get that adhesive on all the pieces. Okay, so now this one's ready. <laughs> I love using the tape runner adhesives. That's why I've learned how to do that that way. Okay, this one's gonna go down here. See, now I have adhesive all the way across. Awesome. And then we'll tuck it behind. So we'll put a little bit more adhesive back here, actually. And we're gonna go straight to the edge with the adhesive because we're gonna put something underneath this white piece and on top of it. So I'm going right, I'm gonna go even closer, right up to the edge. Can you see it? There we go, now you can see it. So I've went right up to the edge there and right up to the edge on that one. Oh, not very close. How... Closer, Rachel. <laughs> okay, now these are, this is where these little pieces come in, these guys here. So we're gonna take and grab them and connect them to the bottom. So we've got a fun little decoration on the bottom. And let's do one on the top here too. Actually, these aren't all one piece, so we'll just take and <clears throat> add them by hand. We'll do one there, we'll do one here, and one coming out there. There. So there I have that decorative piece ready to add to the front of the card. This piece here, I'm gonna trim up a little bit. I'm only gonna see this portion, so I'm just gonna come in and we're gonna get rid of all of this. just to get it out of our way. 
Okay, now that piece is ready to add, and we're gonna add that to this green piece. Now this green piece you're gonna see both sides of, but you know how there's like that, you can feel kind of a little ridge after you've cut? This I know is the underside, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna choose that as the bat, or the inside of my card. Um, just because this is the front, this is the inside, and I just feel like it, this little ridge, which is barely there, but you can kind of tell if you're a stamper. Um, I'm just gonna have that on the inside. You, you can choose though. So now we're gonna take and we're gonna run this adhesive really close to the right edge here, but so that we're not beyond, um, so that we don't go beyond too far all the way to the top and bottom, because we want that's gonna be exposed here and here. So we only wanna go to the edge, like so, and I got it on my table, <laughs> like that. Okay, and then if it's not enough, I think we'll be able to come in a little bit further, hang on. Yes, oh, we can come in a little bit further. We're gonna come in about a half an inch. Okay, and I didn't go, again, I didn't go to the top or the bottom there. Can you see that? A little bit of it's on the edge here, too far on the edge. There, now we're gonna add this and we're gonna make it go just like that. And this adhesive here is gonna hold onto that piece. Now if that's bugging you to have it loose like that, I like it, but if it's bugging you, you can always take and sponge on that multi-purpose liquid glue. That would be a way to make it lie completely flat but I think, I really like the dimension that it gives when it's, it's kind of, you know, sticking up like that. So that piece is ready to add. And then this piece just needs to get layered. So we're gonna add adhesive onto the back side of that. Add that onto our larger mossy meadow piece like that. And this is going to get layered. We're going to layer this. onto our five and a half by four and a quarter mossy meadow here. Oh gosh, come into the camera, Rachel, right there. Okay, so my card's gonna open this way. Okay, one more thing that I need to add before I finally put this whole thing together is these last two ribbons. And, oh, and the embellishments, the really pretty embellishments I told you about. So we're gonna keep these connected. I didn't pull these completely off yet because I'm not done adding the adhesive to them. So keeping these connected, running that adhesive, and it doesn't have to be all the way throughout, but at least here and there, and then a little bit on the ends. <laughs> it's fun. This is my, uh, here, I'm gonna turn it this way because my hand's getting, this is my idea of messiness. You guys know I'm a, a neat freak, Tape, that's it, right? Just a little bit of tape on your fingers, Rachel, because it rolls right off. Keep these connected, and then we're just going to add them to the edge, right up to the edge of our designer paper, like so. Hopefully I'm getting that straight, because I am not, yeah. I'm at a different angle, so it's kind of hard to see, but I did it, I did it. So that gets stuck on like that, and now we get to add this piece. So this piece is going to be adhered here. But before we do that, we have to start from the inside and go out. Because this is a Z fold where inside sections are exposed, you have to start from the inside to know where your boundaries are. So of our three pieces, our three main extra pieces that get added onto our card, this one, it goes on the inside, needs to be put on first. So we'll stick that in here and we'll center it between all of those edges. And then we'll close this down and we're gonna add this piece next. Now when we add this piece, you'll notice, here's the tape side here, you'll notice that this will be exposed if I go too far over like that. Now you, so, you totally can. If you like that look, you can. In fact, I've done that on some other cards that I've done with this fold and it looks really cool to have that little pocket come out but what what happens is if you're signing your card on the inside and you you use up that whole white space 
sometimes your writing gets exposed and that kind of looks funny. So what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna bring it further out like that. Before we do that, I'm just gonna make sure that I've got enough adhesive on here just by going over the top of the white sections that were taped. Okay, so now line it up and you'll see that I've got this piece just as tall as my other piece. This is five and a half inches tall. This is five and a half inches tall. So that if you are one of those people, people that like to display your cards, you can. It'll sit, sit up really nice, especially since it's a long accordion card. It's going to sit without having that uneven look to it. Okay, this piece goes on top next. And so we'll just add a little bit more adhesive through here. And, oh, I got gooeys on that one. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> I saw another demonstrator do this too recently. They brought in their contraband. <laughs> this is a um, an adhesive eraser. We used to carry it. I'm sorry, we don't have it right now. Uh, hopefully, it'll come back because it's one that we were all like shocked when they when they discontinued it. We're like, what? Yeah. So I had to get that gooey goo stuff off. If you have an adhesive eraser, <laughs> hang on to it because it's a great, awesome, basic tool. So there's that. And then the last thing that we're gonna add is our embellishments. So I'm bringing in our wonderful gems. By the way, this ribbon is called All the Tidings, All the Tidings? All the Trimmings, All the Trimmings ribbon. And I ran out of the Poppy Parade reddish color. Um, I had lots of the Old Olive green color, but I didn't have a lot of Poppy Parade. I would suggest to you that you add a bit of Poppy Parade there too. I just didn't have any left, <laughs> so so I didn't. <sighs> Sigh. Okay, for the inside of our card, we're gonna add one that has lots of gold on it. So let me show these to you up close. Oh, I should be using that take your pick tool. It's gonna be easier. So I'm gonna add that here. And let me show you these, these goodies. These little gems have um, you have two different styles on here. You have either the red ones or you have the clear ones. And the clear ones, you can see the flecks of gold in them. Um, so, but some of them have more gold than others. So it's kind of fun. You can pick and choose which ones you like. On the outside of the card, I'm going to add a large red one. And I'm gonna add it where it's darker. So I think maybe like around here. Now look at it, it takes on that darker red of the card of the designer paper, doesn't it? But then when you add one, say here, it looks lighter red. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that in the lighting. Darker red and lighter red because they're kind of clear. They're kind of transparent. So the color will show even if you're using the red ones. So I've got that poppy parade-ish looking red and I've got the cherry cobbler looking red from the colors in the designer paper. And then we'll just grab another one here, maybe one that's not so goldish and we'll just add that going across that section. So there's our little hint of red embellishments since I didn't have the red ribbon left. But there's our love to celebrate you birthday wishes card that could be given out during the colder seasons of the month, okay? Let me show you another one now. This one, for this one, I added in a couple more inks. I used the Poppy Parade and Cherry Cobbler inks, and I used this pattern of designer paper. And when I made this one, I, be careful not to touch my inks, inked up stamps here. When I used this one, I used the stamp set called Healing Hugs. So again, not Christmas, but look at the rose in this. So there's a rose, there's a leaf pattern, in fact, a, a few different leaf pattern type things in there. And then um, the sentiments just worked really well with the sizes of the paper that you have too. So I use the Get Well Soon, wishing you a complete, uh, uh, quick and complete recovery, sending you healing vibes. I use all three of those. Um, of course, for the card, the finished card, I didn't use all three. But um, before I show it to you, I was playing around with the coloring in of the leaves because on the designer paper, 
you can see that there's this type of leaf here, right? And I thought, and it's hard to tell here because I don't know if you can see it, but this one looked the closest. So this one here I colored with my Light Mossy Meadow Blends. This one I colored with the Dark Soft Sea Foam Blends. And this one I used a blender pen, they call them blender pens, and that's where you take and you pull the ink from the outline image and it colors it in naturally. But I thought it gave kind of a yellowish cast to it. So that's why I chose the blends and then I chose this one. I just thought it had the best look. So that is what I came up with for a, a layer that you could do on the front of the card. But I ended up using a different stamp instead on my final one. I don't know why, I like both of them. The border dies that I used for this one uh, come from the Ornate Borders, Ornate Borders dies. And I was gonna use this rose one, but this one ended up looking better. Here's the finished design. So again, I was gonna go with this, which looks great, right? But I don't know why, I just changed it out to get well soon. I've got hair on there, sorry. Cat hair. Get well soon. And on the inside, it looks like this. So you can see I've got the Ornate Borders dies there. I've got some of those fun, wonderful gems in the clear with gold. And then I've got some um, red ones over here stamped with the Poppy Parade ink, which matches the color in the designer paper. And this Poppy Parade, I actually stamped onto my scrap paper, my grid paper, once. And then without re-inking, I stamped onto my white paper. Stamped this in Mossy Meadow and then colored it in with the light Mossy Meadow blends marker that I shared earlier. So there's another one done the same way, done with the same measurements of the Mossy Meadow pieces, the Whisper White pieces. The only thing that I did differently is I cut it so that I could have a fun little extra border from the designer paper here. I'm thinking I still like the ribbon uh, accent border a little bit more to separate the paper from the dies, but um, just another idea. So if you don't have the ribbons, you could do it that way. And then I brought in this ribbon and played around with it because after I had made the cards, I said, Oh my gosh, I have this wider gold edge ribbon. This is our vanilla. It's a, a gold metallic edge ribbon, but it has a vanilla tone to it. And so I thought with the designer paper, I needed to color that anyway. So I grabbed my Cherry Cobbler Blends Marker and I colored onto the ribbon. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. Hang on. Do I have anything else? No, okay. So on my last card that I'm gonna show you, I colored onto the ribbon. Okay. So here, here's what you can do with this fold. You can take and you can connect this piece here. You can connect this piece here and you have basically a traditional card. I keep flicking it off to the side, you guys. Rachel, tilt and then flick. <laughs> I'm in the old habits still, but at least I know how to repair them. So I'm, I'm putting it onto a cherry cobbler card base and I have just basically a traditional type of open card, but I have fun little decorations from the designer paper in the front and the beautiful paper on the inside just because of that same fold. Here's another way to do it. Okay, I've already connected it to the base, but we're going to use our tape and we're going to just connect the middle two panels. So now we have a card that has three sections. So you could put something in here and then they open further and they can see even more. So that's another way that you can fold it. So you can do the accordion, you can do the traditional card, you can do it so it opens with um, two inside sections. 
You can also do it, and this is what I first started out doing because my designer paper that I that I'll share I share I did this with some autumn paper, um, but I haven't posted those on my blog yet. But for this one, you could just attach the front, and that way when you open it up, it's more like a Z fold rather than an accordion, and you have this connected, and you see that flip side of the paper even when the card is open. So that was one of my favorite ways. And here is the last way. So again, accordion, right? Z fold, two insides, traditional, and this is the last way. So we're gonna make all these flaps stay down, but I'm not gonna attach them with adhesive. I mean, if I was, I would probably use a really thin line of glue just on the edges here, here, and then we can attach it completely here. In fact, we'll just do that right now. So we'll just put some adhesive down here. That one's completely attached. And then these are going to stay down because I've inserted my colored ribbon. There's where that ribbon comes in. So I've colored the ribbon with the cherry cobbler and I'm just gonna tie this across the top. It's gonna hold it down so all the panels stay in place and it's gonna make it so I don't have stickies on the inside. So that when I wanna add um, like a gift card, let's just say that's a gift card, I can add a gift card to this pocket and I can add a note to this pocket and nothing's gonna get stuck to any sticky residue on the inside edges. So there's another idea. I will be finishing up these three cards soon. Um, I'll probably make one of them a Christmassy card and then I'll share the, those with you again on a future blog post. Before I let you go, I do, and before we draw prizes, I wanna mention the Get and Go Starter Kit promotion. So this is something that I was tapping into earlier when I started talking to you. The Get and Go Starter Kit promotion. So again, all year long, you can get the starter kit up to $125 worth of merchandise, <clears throat> maybe the stamp and cut and emboss machine, um, for only $99 plus tax. But during the month of September, you can get some additional fun things added to your kit. And these will just get thrown in. Three, some fun goodies here. So you get two stamp sets, Queen's, Queen Anne's Lace stamp set and the So Much Love stamp set. And then you're gonna get the rhinestone basic jewels, because who can't use more rhinestones? Plus, you're going to get some card bases that are pre-cut, ready to go, to make 16 cards. Eight of two different card styles. So you can't really see all of them there, but that's that's the deal. It's awesome, and you, you'll have card bases ready to go. Next week, I'm gonna play around with those card bases for our live, and I'm gonna show you some fun things that you can do with them. But this week, I just wanted to kind of put that in your ear. Um, if you are interested in getting the starter kit, oh gosh, we don't have anything on the table. If you're interested in getting the starter kit, just let me know. You can find me at stampyourartout.com. If you already have a demonstrator, visit them and ask them about it. If you are a demonstrator, well then, we just got the best of everything, don't we? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put these up here even though they're not done, just that you can kind of see them all at once here. And we're ready to share prize options. I'm so excited. It's time for prizes. I'm gonna get these out of the way here. We have um, already pre-chosen some winners from last week. So yes, even if you comment after the live, you get entered into a prize drawing. So when this live is done, come back in, visit me one more time. If you have to rewatch it or whatever, add another comment. Um, this morning I drew a couple winners from last week's broadcast when I shared the face, the, the folded face mask card slash holder, right? So let me pull those names in so you can see them. Congratulations. Oh, what are they gonna get, Rachel? What are they gonna get? That's right, I should share that. <laughs> Okay, move these out of the way. We have, from last week, we have that Wink of Stella, that beautiful shimmery paint. 
uh, in, a, in a paintbrush ready to go. And then we have the journaling pens. Now somebody asked last week, what would I use with journaling pens if I don't scrapbook? They're just awesome pens. You don't have to scrapbook to use these, but you can write on the back of your photos with them. Um, they're, they're awesome. They're just, you've got two different tips. You have a real narrow one and a, a, a normal one, but you can write on paper with them. They're just a great kind of felt tipish marker. I love them. So the winners for those people are, congratulations to Rita Horning and Zwa, Zwila? Zwa, Z, Zyla, Zyla. <laughs> Zoila, Zoila, is that how you say it? <laughs> I should have practiced that before I put it up there. Zoila, I'm thinking that's how it's said. Sorry, sorry Zoila and Rita, Congratulations, make sure you reach out to me. Um, I don't know if Trisha's um, on the ball with this or not, but Trisha, if you can post my email address for the prize winners, that would be really good because um, sometimes, uh, here, let's go to my computer. Oh, we are on my computer. On my computer, oops, you get to see the backstage here. At stampyourartup.com, when you visit me there, you can scroll and you can get to the bottom here. Um, let me move that out of the way again. But down here, it says my contact information. There's a little letter that you click on and then you can email me. There's my phone number if you wanna reach out that way. But that's how you can get in contact with me if, if you're a prize winner and you hear your name drawn. Otherwise, Trisha will post hopefully my email address in there, stampyourartout at comcast.net and um, I wanted to point out too, while we're at the computer here, oh, got a friend here sharing some cards. But if you are, <laughs> I've got notifications popping up. If you are someone who is on Facebook, um, you can find invitations to these events by going to Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel and then clicking on the more button, going to events. I'm, I'm pointing this out to you because a lot of people are lost on where you can find this information. But if you click on the date of the event, a couple days before, and click on see more, a couple days before, you will see an actual link to the video. It's right there. So all you have to do is click on that a few minutes before we go live and you're right there. And it tells you the information about it. Also, if you go back here, I think we'll be able to see those events again. You can see my other events coming up. So you can see I'm planning to go live on the 23rd, the 30th, the 7th. So every Wednesday um, so far is, is open in my calendar and I hope to see you again. Um, let's see, what else do I wanna share? Oh, I wanna share prizes for this week. So let me get those on the desk so you can see them. They're unique, they're very unique. Let's go down to the desk again. So, what you get if you are a prize winner is a choice between these three piles. It's a roll of ribbon. This one is a roll of navy ribbon along with three bases ready to go. This is using the Knight of Navy cardstock for the base and then and there's three pieces of that and then there's three designer papers. You might have some retired designer paper in there, you might have current, but they are cut and scored ready to go to make three of these types of cards. So Knight of Navy is a choice. Then we have this Rococo Rose color as a choice. And we have the Early Espresso as a choice. So you get to pick, and there's three different designer papers in each of them, but they're all packaged up, so I can't show them to you, but they're really fun. What a great surprise, right? So let's go back to the computer. I wanna see, I'm gonna peek here at our live stream to see, oh, Let's see here. Um, did she draw a winner? Did she draw? There she did. Yay! It's Stephanie Newberry. Congratulations to Stephanie. And I hope that you all come back and visit me next week on September 23rd at 11 a.m. Central Time. Um, I think that's it. Have a great rest of your week, everybody. Thanks for joining me. And remember to go and stamp your art out. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>